Dear students, subject toxicological chemistry, lecture number three. Topic: the result of xenobiotic in the body, the entering, distribution, alteration, and excretion of a toxicant. The main ways and stages of biotransformation. Factors which affect metabolism, metabolites, and toxicity. Toxic substance. Or poison. In medical practice, a large number of drugs belonging to the relevant classes of chemical compounds are used for the treatment and prevention of various diseases. These pharmaceutical drugs have the ability to restore the damaged functions of the organism from the effects of diseases using therapeutic doses. Therefore, these drugs have entered the daily life of people on a large scale. The name drug can also be harmful to humans and animals under certain conditions. They can disrupt the vital functions of the body, cause serious pathological changes in the body, and if not treated in time, in some cases even death may happen. The complex of pathological changes that occur In the body, on the influence of drugs and other substances is called poisoning or intoxication, and the substance that causes poisoning is called a toxic substance or simply poison. In other words, the poison is a chemical that can cause illness, and if ingested in appropriate amounts, even death may happen under certain conditions. Poisoning is usually caused by an exogenous poison that enters the body from outside. Thus, there is no absolute poison in nature. It is no chemical substance that can cause poisoning under any circumstances. A chemical can only be poisoned under certain conditions. Poisoning can be caused by pharmaceutical which in high doses can disrupt the normal function of the body, also by many other substances released by the chemical industry to meet the needs of all sectors of the economy. These include chemical poisons used in agriculture as a measure to control plant and animal pests, various technical liquids, cosmetics, household chemicals, and ads. In some cases, poisonous parts of plants cause poisoning of humans and animals. Therefore, in the study of toxicological chemistry, it is recommended to call all the substances that cause poisoning, whether used as a drug or for other purposes poison. The rapid development of chemical science, the constant improvement of chemical technology, and the further increase of the production capacity for the chemical industry lead to the synthesis of large quantities of chemical compounds which were successfully used in various sectors of the economy. Of course, many of these substances pose a threat to the human body under certain conditions and have toxic effects. However, there is no common classification for the poisoning which caused by a toxin. There are currently several classifications based on various factors. According to the clinical way of poisoning, they are divided into two groups, acute and chronic poisoning. Acute poisoning occurs when a high dose of a toxic substance is ingested for one time. This is accompanied by rapidly occurring symptoms resulting in death in a few minutes. Cyanic acid and the it salts hours, days. Most of the time, acute poisoning occurs by accident. However, in some cases, acute poisoning may be intentional in order to misappropriate another's property, to kill him or to make the victim helpless with the intention of raping him. Such poisoning is called criminal poisoning. If a poison is used to common suicide, it's called suicidal. Chronic poisoning occurs when a small dose 
of a toxin that accumulates in the body is taken repeatedly over a long period of time. Also, such substances don't cause acute poisoning, they can disrupt one or another function of the organism. The cause of chronic poisoning is gradual and the symptoms are not very clear. Depending on the conditions of happening, po poisoning again divided into two groups, domestic and occupational poisoning. Occupational poisoning occurs in factories, workshops, various enterprises, laboratories, it's where toxic substances are produced and used. Workers and employees who work with toxic substances are affected with their effects. Such substances cause chronic poisoning in case of violation of safety and labor protection rules. Domestic poisoning occurs as a result of negligence as a storage and use of toxic substances applied to domestic and household use. One of the causes of domestic poisoning is the lack of awareness among the population about toxicity of the some drugs and other substances. Elderly people accidentally ingest various toxic liquids instead of alcohol while drinking alcohol, which can lead to acute domestic poisoning. Acute domestic poisoning is also common in children as a result of keeping medicines and household toxins in uncontrolled places that can easily fall into the hands of children. When children pretend to be adults are, and are left without attention, they consistently swallow pills, tablets, drugs, and other forms of medicine that are stored in easily assembly places in which contain toxic and violent substances as a result in acute poisoning. Domestic poisoning also includes alcoholism and drug addiction. Alcoholism is defined as a systematic overdose of alcohol, with amounts that cause alcoholism. As a result of long-term excessive alcohol consumption, very serious pathological changes occur in the body of alcoholics, which result in chronic alcoholism. Narcomania occurs as a result of continuous use of narcotic substances. Narcomania is a very important social problem. To define the concept of narcomania, it is necessary to focus on the definition of the term narcotic substances. The narcotic substances are not evaluated from, only from a pharmacological point of view. It has three criteria, medical, social, and legal. The absence of any of three criteria from above doesn't justify the use of substances as a drug. Thus, on the basis of the definition of the term narcotic substances, it is possible to clarify the terms of narcomania as well as toxicomania. Toxicity of chemical compounds is caused by the interaction of the organism, toxins and the environment. Toxicity of toxic substances depends on many factors, dose and concentration, of the substances, physical and chemical properties, rules of entry and absorption rate, individual sensitivity, condition of the organism, other substances, chemical structure of the substances, toxic kinase of the substances. As mentioned above, of the important facts determining the toxicity of chemical in their dosage. Depending on the dose, any of the same chemicals can act as a both a drug and poison. Well known literature sources provide a broad classification of doses and provide relevant information about them. From the point of view of toxicological chemistry, it is more important to focus on three doses which have some appropriate importance medicinal or therapeutic, poisoning or toxic, and deadly metal doses. The dose that provides a certain therapeutic effect is called the therapeutic dose of the substance. A dose that causes non-fatal pathological changes in the body is called the toxic dose. The dose that kills the body is called the lethal dose of the substance. Dosage of toxic substances is expressed in mass 
grams, milligrams, micrograms, volumes, milliliter drops, as well as the unit of biological activity. LD50 is used for comparative assessment of toxicity. This is the average dose that kills 50% of experimental animals within three days of entering the body, stomach, intestines, skin. In some cases, experimental animals are observed for 14 days, not three days to determine LD50. LD50 is expressed in milligrams of substance per kilogram of animal weight. Toxicity of gaseous substance is expressed in terms of concentration, not dose. Physical and chemical properties of the substance also have a great influence on the toxicity. The physical properties of the substance, first of all, include state of aggregation and solubility in water and fats. These properties have a very active effect related to the formation process of toxic properties of the substance. When gaseous substances and vapors of volatile liquids enter the body through the respiratory tract, the toxic effects occur relatively rapidly compared to liquids or solids that enter the digestive tract or enter from the skin. The toxicity of solid substances depends on the size of their particles. The final ground substance in the form of powder acts faster than its large particles. This is due to the different solubility of small and large particles and their ability to enter the bloodstream at an unequal rate. The toxicity of chemical compounds depend on their better solubility in oil and water. Substances that are well soluble in fat pass very easily through the skin and are easily absorbed from the blood through the membranes into the cells. The toxicity of substances that are well soluble in water depend on their dissociation. For example, barium chloride and barium nitrate dissociate very well in water and that's why they are high toxic. Barium sulfate in, insoluble in water doesn't dissociate and doesn't have any toxic effect in the body. Of course, the chemical properties of the substance are not neglected. The same property applies applies to some arsenic compounds. Arsenides and arsenates, which dissociate well in water, have a very high toxicity. Arsenic three oxide, which is poorly soluble in water, is less toxic than arsenide and arsenates. Heavy metal salts, which are well soluble in water, are more toxic than oxidized of these metals. Water insoluble mercury one chloride is less toxic than water salt mercury 2 chloride. Metallic mercury entering the digestive tract is generally not toxic to the body. However, due to the effect of gas capacity in juice, a certain part of metallic mercury is chemically converted into solution and absorbed into the bloodstream and because of this, there is a toxic effect. The toxicity of men Many substances depends on the way to enter the body. When the same dose of a toxic substance enters the body in different ways, different toxic effects occur. When large amounts of hexane vapors enter the body through the respiratory tract, a person loses consciousness after one or three minutes. If the amount of hexane, or even a little more, enters the body by the digestive tract, the toxic effect is quite weak. The rate of absorption of the substance into the body is also a very important indicator. The absorption of the substance into the vein is instantaneous. When the substance is injected into the bloodstream, it provides a relatively high concentration and the toxic effect happens much faster. The same substance doesn't have the same effect or on humans and for the different species of animals. This can be explained by the effects of atropa and digitals on human, humans and animals. The atropa contains tropan alkaloids and the digitalis contains cardiac glucosides. No signs of poisoning are observed when grass-eating animals feed on these plants. However, 
Several poisoning occurs when people take medicines from these plants in the same dose. The factor includes age and age health status, general condition of the body. Depending on them, the toxin can affect the body in different ways. Completely different doses of toxic and several drugs have been determined taking into account the specifics of age for adults and children. Children rail less than adults. Therefore, in order to achieve the appropriate therapeutic effects, children depending on their age are prescribed these drugs in smaller doses than adults. People over the age of 60 are prescribed lower doses of drugs than younger people because in older people the metabolic processes and the rate of excretion of metabolites are usually very slow. In these individuals, the effective concentration of the drug is obtained when they are given to the body in small doses. Other substances in the body or injected with this poison also play an important role in the formation of toxic effects. Other substances can have different effects on the strength of the poison. Chemical structure also can affect toxic effect. The effects of the to organic toxin depend on their chemical structure. However, the regularities of this dependence have not yet been discovered for the, some of the uh, substances. It has been shown that the toxicity of toxic substances depends on the presence of pre 13 functional groups and unsaturated bonds in their molecules. Many unsaturated compounds are more toxic than chemically similar saturated compounds. Allyl alcohol, which belongs to unsaturated, to unsaturated compounds, is more toxic than propyl alcohol, which is, low, which is close to it from the saturated compounds. Organic substance which contains some functional groups as uh, nitrogen, sulfuric, nitra, nitrates in the molecule are more toxic. The toxic effects increase from chlorine, fluorine, arsenic, and mercury atoms when they include with an organic molecule. The isomeric ability of chemical compounds is reflected in their toxic properties. The toxicity of isomers of many chemical compounds is not the same. The left turning isomer of heosamine is almost 100 times more toxic than the right turning isomer. Aliphatic alcohols are more toxic than their branched chain isomers. Surface heat says that propyl and butyl alcohols have a higher toxicity than their isomers, either propyl and either butyl alcohols. The toxicity of chemical compounds also depends on your location in the appropriate homologous sequences. In the homologous sequence, as a molecular weight of compounds increases, so do their toxic properties. For example, propionic acid is more toxic than acetic acid, and oil acid is more toxic than propionic acid. It should be noted that as the number of carbon atoms in the molecule of alcohols increases, so do their toxic properties also increases. However, there is an exception of this rule. Those metal alcohol, which ranks first in the homology of aliphatic alcohols and is the product of metan oxidation, has a higher toxicity than ethyl alcohol. The same applies to formaldehyde, a product of the oxidation of methyl alcohol. Formaldehyde is a more potent poison than acetaldehyde. Vapors of cyclic hydrocarbons, for example, cyclopropan, cyclobutan, and ETH, are much more toxic than the vapors of the corresponding aliphatic hydrocarbons, for example, propane, butane, pentane, and ETH. The toxic kinase of the substance are briefly described above. The body struggles in one way or another with the toxin, which is absorbed into the body and then distributed to the all organs and tissues, trying to repel its effects. Without medical help, the body is helpless in the face of strong toxins. The intense toxic effect of a toxic substance are closely related to the toxic kinetic of the substance. 
In order to better understand the essence of this issue, it is important to focus more on, on toxic kinetics of the poison, its individual stages and the corresponding regularities. Toxic kinetics research for each toxic substance consists of revealing the natural regularities of all stages, starting from the stage of absorption after its entry on, into the body and ending with its, its elimination from the body. To do this, we need to know the following issues in sequence. Ways of entry of toxic substance into the organism, absorption of toxic substance into the organism, distribution of toxic substance in the organism, combination of toxic substance with the constitutional elements of the organism, metabolism of toxic substances in the organism, excretion of toxic substances from the organism. Toxin, uh, toxins can enter the body in different ways. So all the mouth, respiratory tract, skin, different membranes, and it. Most poisoning occur when the substance enters the body through the mouth. This path is characteristic for food and domestic poisoning. During food poisoning, toxins enter the mouth with food. Toxins then that uh, enter the body through the mouth can be absorbed absorbed both directly from the oral cavity and the relevant part of the digestive tract. Substances absorbed into the blood from the membranes of the oral cavity are not affected by gastric and intestinal juices. They don't enter the liver directly. Cyanides, nicotine, phenol, nitroglycerin and other substances are absorbed from the membranes of the oral cavity. Ethyl alcohol and alcoholic solutions can also enter the body through the membranes of the oral cavity. Most of the substances which enter the body through the mouth are absorbed through the stomach and small intestine. The rate of absorption of substances entering the digestive tract depends on their physical and chemical purpose and the pH of the stomach and intestinal capacity. Acids and basic substances are absorbed in the form of dissociated molecules from the digestive tract. In this way, substances from air which have a form of gases, vapors and dust, they can easily enter the, to the body. Respiratory poisoning occurs mainly in industrial enterprises where the air is not sufficiently ventilated. Home poisoning by carbon dioxide and other substances can also occur when they enter the body using this way. Toxins which enter the body using the respiratory tract, they move into the blood very quickly. This is explained by three things. First, the large surface area of the large alveoli where the toxin is absorbed. Second, the small thickness of the alveol membranes. And last, intensity of blood flow in the pulmonary capillaries. Some volatile substances are already being absorbed from the upper respiratory tract. However, most of these substances are moved fully absorbed by the lungs. Absorption of volatile substances in the body occurs according to the laws of diffusion. Chlorine derivates of hydrocarbons, alcohols, cyanide acid, acetone, gasoline, Dietyl ether, formaldehyde, as well as the vapors of sulfur, nitrogen, phosphorus, volatile compounds of arsenic and AIDS, can enter the body through the respiratory tract. Through the skin, it is a very important way to enter the body organism of toxins. Skin is considered one of the ways which toxins are used to enter the body. Only lipid soluble substances pass through the epidermis. Water-soluble substances can pass through the skin at very small amounts. The absorption of water-soluble substances into the body is prevented by the layer of fat formed on the surface of the skin as a result of secretory activity of the glands. Chlorinated derivatives of nicotine, tetraethyl lead, hydrocarbons, chlorinated chemicals, pesticides, Aromatic amines, fatty hydrocarbons from carbon-6 to carbon-10, thallium, mercury and other metals are easily absorbed through the skin. By parenteral way, toxins injected through a needle substantially 
intramuscularly, intravenously, pass directly into the bloodstream without entering the digestive tract. Such poisoning can occur very rarely as a result of accidental mistakes. Through placenta in this way, the toxin can be passed from pregnant mothers to the fetus. Fetal poisoning can has occurred as a result of ethyl alcohol, chlorinated pesticides, and heavy metal salts. Toxins can also enter the body through the uterus, rectum, and some other ways. Absorption of toxins in the body. From the environment, toxins first enter the circulating blood and lymph, and then they are transported first to the intercellular fluid and then to the cells. Thus, the blood and lymphatic circulation ensure, ensure the spread of toxins in the body. The distribution of toxins in individual organs and tissues depends on factors other than blood circulation, such as their interaction with plasma and organ proteins, lipid, solubility, ionization rate, and so on. Absorption of toxins from the digestive tract, lungs, and other areas where they enter the body is carried out through the system of cell membranes. Not all substances that enter the bloodstream can easily pass into, the, into any cells. The membranes that surround them prevent the toxins from entering the cells. These membranes relieve nutrition, nutrients and some other substances into the cell. Membranes are also release metabolic products from inside the cell. Given the great role of cell membranes, great attention is paid to the study of their structure and function. Several hypotheses have been proposed about the structure of membranes. At present, the elementary membrane hypothesis is taken as a basis. According to this hypothesis, the membrane is composed of proteins and lipids. Lipids include water in insoluble fats and waxes are soluble in organic solvents. A step of long chain fatty acids and high molecular weight, one atomic alcohols. At one end of the membranes, lipid molecules are polar groups with hydrophilic properties, for example, carboxyl group. And at the other end, there is a long hydrocarbon chain with hydrocarbonic properties. It is known from the literature that can membrane consists of a double layer of mixed polar lipids. Proteins and lipids in cell membranes can vary in composition. Certain molar rates of specific polar lipids are characteristic for each membrane type. There are other microscopic pores in cell membranes. Membranes are, and the pores formed in them, have a certain electrical charge. Several mechanisms are known for the transfer of toxins from membranes to cell. First type of membranes. Depending on their lipophilic properties, these membranes release natural molecules and prevent the passage of ions. The distribution of coexistence of most non-ionizing compounds in their oil, water, and chloroform water systems correspond to the rate of their passage through the membranes. The substance passes from the first type of membrane to the cell according to the laws of diffusion. The substance passes from the membrane to the cell when the concentration of the substance in the cell is less than the concentration in the fluid around the cell. The passage of the substance continues until the concentration of the liquids on both sides of the membrane are the same. From the first type of membrane, Few molecules of lipophilic substance and non-polar compounds pass from the membrane to the cell. Such substances include ethyl alcohol, acetone, phenols, and derivatives benzene, tellurotoline, nitrobenzene, aromatic amines, chloroform, dichloroethane, carbon chloride, cyanic acid, gaseous substances containing chlorine, sulfur, nitrogen, phosphorus, arsenic, and ads. Based on the law of diffusion, Large molecules, for example proteins and other compounds, can also pass into the cell. These substances allow the cell to pass through large pores in the membranes. Second type of the membranes. For most polymer molecules in, the sub, in some ions, cell membranes are 
impermeable. However, some of these substances can pass from the cell membranes to cells in the form of complex compounds. These complex compounds are formed as a result of the interaction of the corresponding substance molecules with the carrier transport system molecules contained in the membrane. Carrier molecules include enzymes, some membrane-specific proteins, and other substances. After entering the cell, the complex compounds break down, releasing the polymer substance. In this way, glucose passes into the atrocytes of human blood. A third type of membranes. It carries more active transport from membranes. Molecules of ions of the transported substance pass from a low-density medium to a high-density environment. During active transport, the molecule or ion of the substance that will pass into the cell bind to the carrier, as in the second type of membrane. However, here the carrier undergoes a chemical transformation, which requires a certain amount of energy. As a result of chemical reaction happen on the one side of the membrane, the carrier changes its shape and acquires a certain resemblance, similarities to the substance of to the ion which needs to transport. The deformed carrier then absorbs the transported substance or ion. The complex compounds formed in this way passes from the membrane to the cell. Within the cell, the complex breaks down and it releases the substance or ion which it carries. The carrier passes out of the membrane in a free state or in a complex with another substance. The fourth type of membranes. In, it differs from the previous types of membranes by having a mosaic uh, structure. Membranes consist of lipid, lipid cylinders and protein cavities. What and small onions pass freely through these pores. Because there are possibly charged particles in the pores of the membranes, they do not pass the cations. They push, push them away. Some pores in the membranes also carry many non-electrolytes. As the size of molecules of non-electrolytes increases, the permeability of the pores of the fourth type of membrane decreases. As mentioned above, large molecule non-electrolytes pass through cells of the first type. Receptors The reactive component of the cell is called the receptor. A chemical that enters the body exerts its effect after reacting chemically with those receptors. Receptors include nerve ending and receive stimulate or special nerve cells that respond to certain changes in the environment. Receptors capable of receiving stimuli from the external environment have been better studied. These include receptors of pain, cold, heat, sound and light waves. All of these receptors are known from the cause of physiology. This material provides information only about the receptors that Trigger the body's response to chemicals, to chemical substance. Toxic effects of toxic substance depend on the presence of receptors in the bioorganic composition. These receptors are groups of molecules or atoms that have the ability to interact with the toxins that enter the body. The receptor function is performed by thiol, hydroxyl, carboxyl, amine, and phosphorus groups contained in proteins and other vital compounds. Some amino acids, nucleic acid, enzymes, vitamins, hormones, and a number of other substances also have receptor properties. Here are a few examples of the interaction of some receptors with toxic substances. Poisoning by heavy metal salts and other ion uh, inorganic substances occurs as a result of the combination of cations of these compounds with thiol groups in the protein molecule. The bond between some metal cations and thiol groups is quite stable because it is covalent. The thiol groups of proteins form very stable bonds with arsenic, antimony, mercury, bismuth, and some other metal 
ions. It is no coincidence that unitiol is used as an antidote during poisoning with these metal compounds. The thiol group in the unitioline combines with the metal ions that occupy the thiol groups of the protein and as a result, the release thiol groups of the protein continue their normal activities. Many phosphorus compounds are chemical poisons. Poisons occur as a result of the combination of these substances with the hydroxyl group of the serine, which is part of the enzyme acetylcholinesterase. The enzyme acetylcholinesterase breaks down acetylcholine into choline and acetic acid. When phosphor compounds and other substances retain the enzyme acetylcholinesterase, toxic doses of acetylcholine accumulate in the body and poisoning occurs. Depending on the continuity of the bond between the toxin and the receptors, different methods are used in the practice of chemical toxicological analysis to isolate these toxins from the biological material. The methods, methods of decomposition of organic substances with mineral acids with oxidizing properties is used to isolate metal poison combined with covalent bonds with receptors in biological material. In order to isolate poisons that combine with ions and other less stable bonds with receptors, the methods of extracting biological material is water, acidified water or acidified alcohol is used. Distribution of toxin in the body. Toxins in the blood are, are transported to all parts of the body. The amount of blood circulating in each organ and the amount of toxins in it depend on the blood supply to that organ. The heart, lungs, brain and liver carry more blood than any other organ, as well as the same amount of toxins. Toxins pass from the blood carrying capillaries to the peripheral region and then from the membranes to the cell. Most toxins are unevenly distributed in different organs and tissues. The distribution of substances in the body depends on their physical and chemical properties. Their solubility in water, fats and other lipids, their ability to dissociate, the composition and functional properties of organs and tissues. Toxic substances that are well soluble in lipids, anesthetic, hypnotics and sedatives, fluented organic insecticides. Pass well through biological membranes and are rapidly and selectively distributed in lipid-rich, well-supplied organs and tissues, mainly the brain, brain and bone marrow. The distribution of substances that are well soluble in lipids depends on the amount of fat and other lipids in the relevant organs and tissues. Non-electrolytes accumulate mainly in tissues that have a high absorption capacity for that substance. Those in chloroform anesthesia, the amount of chloroform in the elongated and spinal cord is 50% higher than in the brain. This is due to the fact that the amount of lipids in the brain is less than in the elongated spinal cord. Toxins, toxins that are well soluble in lipids are slowly eliminated from the body and are slowly converted. As a result of the uneven distribution of toxins in the body, they can accumulate in the relevant organs and tissues. For example, adipose tissue accumulates substances that are well soluble in fats. Organic solvents, chlorinated derivatives, and hydrocarbons. Lead, barium, fluorine, it's accumulate in the bone tissue. The similarity of tetracycline antibiotics to tooth and bone tissue causes them to accumulate in these tissues in the body. Gold and silver accumulate mainly in the skin. Chlorpromazine accumulates mainly in the brain and benzene in the bone marrow. The elements of bismuth, mercury, and arsenics are found in organs and tissues which in proteins, including thiol or other reactive functional groups. Mercury accumulates in the kidneys and causes necrotic changes in them. 
calcium and some other elements ions combine with mucopolysaccharides and mucoproteins in the intercellular fluid. Intercellular fluid makes up about one-fifth of the total mass of the human body. That is, a person weighing 70 kg has 14 liters of intercellular fluid and 28 liters of intercellular fluid. After being distributed in the body, most water-soluble substances are located in most intercellular and intercellular fluids. The location of some toxic substances in the body also depends on the nature of the poisoning. Those an acute poisoning, mercury and arsenic accumulate in the liver and kidneys, and in the chronic poisoning, the nails, bones, hair, and nerve tissue. Given that many toxins are unevenly distributed in the body, knowing their distributing and accumulation is of a great importance for the correct selection of the object of chemical and uh, toxicological analysis. Chemical and toxicological analysis should select organs and tissues that are likely to have the highest levels of toxins being studied. The combination of toxins with the body constitution elements. Most of the toxins which enter the body from form complex or other chemical compounds with proteins, lipoproteins, blood forming elements and adds. The strains of complex compounds formed in the body depends on the nature of the substance forming the complex and the type of bond formed. As a result of the interaction of toxins with proteins and other substances in the body, covalent ionic hydrogen, ion dipole, dipole dipole bonds and formed between the components involved in the reaction. The combination of proteins with toxins can also be achieved by the force of van der Waal. The most durable of these bonds is a covalent bond. The bond formed in the complex of metal cations with proteins is covalent. For this reason, metals can remain in the body for a long time. Given that the toxic effects of most poisons are reversible, it can be assumed that covalent bond bonds between the poison and the biological material are few only in some cases. Complex compounds formed by the interaction of toxins with proteins and other substances in the body are usually unable to cross biological membranes. If the interactions of toxins are reversed, then there is a balance between free and combined forms of toxins in the body. Of the proteins, albumin bonds more actively to toxins. Fibrinogen, gamma globulin, and some other proteins combined with only a limited number of toxins. In particular, gamma globulin binds to bilirubin. So far, the conditions for the formation of protein complex of alkaloids and their synthetic analog analogs have been very well studied. These complexes are formed at a pH above the isolectic point of proteins. Albumin combines were very well with barbiturates, especially those with lipophilic groups in the molecule. Albumin also forms corresponding compounds or complexes with fatty acids. The longer the carbon chain in the molecules of fatty acid, the stronger they are bond with albumin. Substances associated with albumin include sulfonylamide preparation, aromatic acids, idle compounds, XA contrast agent, basic and acid dyes, some natural substances, for example, coumarins, glucosides. Naphtachinones and adds. Since zinc and uh, copper ions combine well with beta globulin, metal cations form resistant complexes and internal complexes with amino acids, peptides, and proteins. Steroid hormones readily combine and with lipoproteins, some antibiotics with nucleic acid, and carbon dioxide with blood hemoglobin. Only a small number of toxins and drugs don't combine with albumin and other proteins once they enter the body. These include ethyl alcohol, glucose, and urea. Xenobiotics differ in their toxicity. The smaller the dose, which is able to cause pathological process in the body, the more significant is considered toxic. The toxic of xenobiotic 
depends on whether you reach the target organ where it will have a detrimental effect, whether there is any communication between the target and the xenobiotic, and how important the target is to the body. The development of intoxication depends on the chemical structure of the xenobiotic, its state of aggregation, its solubility in water and lipids, its molecular weight and chemical activity. As the molecular weight increases, it becomes more difficult for the toxin to enter the body and distribute in it in the organs and tissues. Small molecules, hydrophilic or lipophilic compounds, as a rule, easily cross the histohematic barrier and don't encounter obstacles in distribution in tissue. High molecular compounds, natural and artificial polymers that are poorly soluble in water and lipids cannot cross the barriers and enter the tissue and have no general toxic effects. Despite the large size of molecule lipophilic substances, cross biological barriers relatively easily. As the size of molecule increases, so does the number and specificity of its possible isomers and its activity starting to depend on the conformation. Small molecule compounds are not specific because they have a limited number of isomers. Large amounts of toxicants form a large number of isomers with different toxicity. Binding of the toxicant and the receptor. The effect of exo and auto toxicant on the body, its pharmacological activity directly related to the combination of the toxicant with the specific cellular macromolecular complex of the organism. From a toxicological point of view, the term receptor was first proposed by German scientist Ehrlich in the early 20th century. The term receptors are complex organic parts made up of special cells made up of nerve ending and sensory neurons called dendrites and can convert irritants into narrow impulses. Receptors can be enzymes, amino acids, nucleic acid, vitamins. For example, organophosphorus pesticides form a stable compound with hydrophil of the serine amino acid, the main component of the enzyme acetylcholinesterase, which also acts as a receptor. Receptors consist of functionally active macromolecules of their fragments that act as a target for endogenous ligands. Xenobiotic as well as drug interact with receptors, resulting in numerous biochemical and physiological changes in many organs and systems. By transformation of poisons, the concentration of toxins in the body and tissues and the duration of their stay depend on the, the, their biotransformation. Toxins are subject to various changes in the body. As a result of these changes, more toxic or less toxic substances are formed, the toxic effect of which differs from that of the original compound. For example, metabolites of metal and ethyl alcohols are more toxic than themselves. Organ phosphorus compounds lose their toxicity when hydrolyzed and their toxicity increases sharply when oxidized. More than 200 enzymes are known to induce macrosomal enzyme, enzymes that catalyze the biotransformation of substances are known. As a result of induction, xenobiotics are often inactivated, but sometimes more toxic products are formed that can start material. For example, chloroform, brombenzene, paracetamol, furosemide, acid anilide, and its. It can be shown that their biotransformation results in more active hepatotoxic metabolites. Also, halogenated derivatives of benzene and polycyclic compounds with the allyl group form SH groups and the nucleic acid conjunction epoxides. Brombenzene, naphthalene, benzeprene, apotoxin, sulfas, and phosphorus. Forming end derivatives, haloalkenes, break down to form free radicals. In addition to the, to the liver, these compounds damage other organs, the lungs, brombenzene,
kidneys chloroform, bone marrow, benzene, fatal acids, acetonolate, aromatic amines. Citachrome P450, it's is the most important enzyme involved in metabolism. This enzyme is localized in the smooth endoplasmatic reticulum of the cell and belongs to both carry monoxidases. This figure is added to the end of the name of the enzyme because it forms products with reduced absorption of carbon monoxide and a wavelength of 450 nanometer. At present, more than 150 citochrome P450 enzymes are known to be found in animals, plants, fungi, and bacteria. Citochrome P450 enzymes of higher organisms are membrane enzymes. This enzyme is important in the oxidation of both endogenous and exogenous compounds. Vital social toxins in the body occurs mainly in the liver, gastrointestinal tract, lungs, kidneys, heads, and heads. The process taking place in the liver and are of great importance. The liver has a strong enzyme system. These enzymes are located either in the mitochondria or in the mitosomes or in the hyaloplasm. Sometimes the bite transformation of axonomies is divided into anabolism and catabolism process. Not the base of the chemical change, the undergain in the body, but according to the direction of and the results of the changes. Anabolism is the process of obtaining more complex molecules, while catabolism is the process of obtaining simpler and smaller molecules or break down, breaking down the original substances. The pathways, the pathways of biotransformation of toxic substances are mainly divided into two phases. Phase 1, first phase, oxidation, reduction, hydrolysis, demethylation, methylation, demination, and its. And phase 2, carbulation in conjunction with glucuronic acid with other acids. Secondary metabolism, corpse poisons or tomines. As the body transformation process continues in the corpses of people who have died of poisoning, toxic counts form secondary metabolites. The resulting secondary metabolites get both facilitated and inhibit the chemical toxicological analysis of cannabiotics. After a person dies, the acid base balance of the corpse changes in the direction of acid. As a result, the activity of some tissue enzymes increases and autolysis, the process of tissue cell consumption develops. As a result of the decay of organs and tissues, more than 1,000 new chemical compounds and are formed. The stable toxinobiotics in the corpse material depends on the ambient temperature and the shelf life of the corpse. For example, clozapid breaks down in one to eight weeks, diazepam can remain unchanged in blood plasma at room temperature for three weeks and at uh, four degrees Celsius for up to eight weeks. Atopin is stored in the corpse material for three years. Phenotiazine derivatives for four or uh, eight weeks. After a month, only one part of three of the cardiac glucosides can be found in the corpse material. Aromatic compounds remain more in the corpse material than aromatic compounds. Organic com poisons cause the carboxylation, demethylation, desulfuration, hydrolysis, oxidation as a result of this process. Okay, thank you very much.